Hello and welcome back to my channel. In this session, we are going to look at uh, uh, 10 AWS IAM scenario based questions that you can expect as part of your uh, uh, interview process for AWS. Now, in the last session, we looked at the final part, uh, part six of your AWS scenario based questions. Um, so that completed the series. Uh, for the AWS scenario based questions. Now here we'll be talking about some of the common questions that you can expect from the IAM service and this will be your scenario based questions that you can expect. Uh, once again, before I start off with the session, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. So the first question we have is, you have multiple AWS accounts that uh, you use within your organization and you need to grant permissions to your users across these accounts. How can you achieve this securely? So you have AWS accounts which has been used by your users and then you want to manage these AWS accounts and also give permissions to the users to these AWS accounts. How can you do that? Now, whenever we talk about managing or working with multiple AWS accounts, we have the service called AWS organizations, which can be used to centrally manage multiple AWS accounts. So, you know, uh, we can have, uh, we can use this service to start managing more than one AWS account. So, you know, the one advantage of this service you have is uh, you get a consolidated billing for all of your AWS accounts. So it's a centrally, uh, uh, all of your AWS accounts, you can start managing it from one single place. And then you can set up cross account IAM access to your users. So basically you can create cross account IAM roles, which will give the users access from one AWS account to another AWS account. So for this, ideally what you will do is you can go to this AWS organizations and you'll have to first add the uh, AWS accounts to this organization. So as of now, this account, my current account, this will be called as the root account. And then we can start adding additional uh, AWS accounts to this organization. And then you can start managing these accounts centrally. Post this, you can make use of the IAM uh, service to create the roles to grant access from one AWS account to another AWS account. The next question we have is, a uh, developer needs access to an S3 bucket and uh, it is for a limited time to troubleshoot an issue that the developer is having. Uh, how can you provide temporary access to this developer without sharing long term credentials? So basically we want to give access to a service and it is only for a limited time. So how can we uh, do that? Well, for this, we can again create an IAM role. And with this, we can utilize your STS policy, which is your security token service. And this will help us to generate temporary credentials. So this IAM role will have the permissions and this will be associated with your STS, which will generate your temporary credentials. So we won't be having any long term credentials here. And then we can associate this IAM role with the developer who can assume this role for a specific duration. So there is a session that will be associated whenever this developer is using this IAM role. And then, you know, the, the uh, credentials will expire after certain duration. So that way we will be assigning only temporary um, access to the uh, user to do whatever they want on the AWS account. The next question we have is, you want to ensure that all of your IAM users in your AWS account have MFA, which is your multi-factor authentication. So how can you enforce this policy? So basically you want to ensure that all of your users are uh, making use of the MFA and you want to make it mandatory. So how can you do that? Now for this, you can create an IAM policy, which will require MFA. So, you know, this policy will ensure that the users are um, enabling the MFA, which is your multi-factor authentication for certain users. And then you can attach this to all of your IAM users. And also when you are creating the user accounts for your users, you can ask the users to enable the MFA. So, you know, in this case, if I, this is my root account. So if you look at the root account, uh, let me show, well, this is, um, um, I think they've updated this console, the dashboard, this is new. So let me just find out where we have this. I think it would be available under the account settings, I believe. 
let's see let's just no we don't have it here so um i think it would be uh let me find that uh yeah so here you can see this mfa so this is for the root account all right so whatever the root account that i have created this is for this particular account uh, likewise the user accounts what are the users you are creating you can ask the users to uh, create the, to enable their own mfa multi-factor authentication to uh, make sure uh, you have the two-step authentication for your aws accounts the next question we have is you are managing a la large team of developers and you want to reduce the administrative overhead of managing im users individually what solution can you implement so here basically instead of managing the users individually you want to manage these um, uh, users like you know from a central place and um, uh, you know you want to reduce this administrative overhead what can we do for that now for this we can implement uh, aws service called aws sso which is your single sign on and this will help you to centrally manage your um, users and also the permissions for your team and this will allow you to integrate with your identity provider so if you are using any uh, single sign on authentication you can enable this identity provider and this will simplify your user management so for this you can make use of this aws um, sso service which is your identity center and we can start using this to manage large teams so that you don't have to manage the users individually from the iam uh, uh, console so here you can enable this and this is your uh, sso which is your single sign on so we can utilize this option the next question we have is you have a lambda function that needs access to uh, resources in an s3 bucket how can you grant this function the necessary permissions securely? So you have a Lambda function and that Lambda function needs access to the S3 bucket. So how can we do that? Now, by default, we know that uh, the services in AWS, they cannot talk to each other. So one service cannot talk to another service by default. Now for this, what we can do is we can create an IAM role that will have the necessary permissions, which in this case will be giving access to your S3 bucket. So we can create an IAM role for this particular uh, use case. So ideally what we will do is we'll go to the IAM service and uh, we will be creating an IAM role and that role will have um, uh, access to your S3 bucket. So here I can search for, all right, so this will be Lambda. So my Lambda will be consuming this role and then uh, we want to give access to the S3 bucket. So you can choose, so you want to give full access or read only access. So in our case, it will be a full access. And then you just have to fill in the details. You can give it a name or description and then create this role. Now, once you're done creating this role, you can go ahead and attach this role to the Lambda service. That way your Lambda will get the necessary permissions to uh, use the resources that you have in the S3 bucket. The next question we have is, you need to provide an external contractor with temporary access to your AWS environment. What is a secure way to do this? So you have someone who is outside your organization, so it's an external contractor, and you want to give some permission to your AWS environment. So again, for this, we will be using the IAM uh, user. So we'll create an IAM user, we'll configure the necessary permissions which in this case we will give the least possible permission for the user that is you know what the user can do at the minimum what the user can do we will be assigning only those permissions and then we do, we can also set an expiration date so that you know like for example let's say the im user will be active for one day and after that the the user will expire so we can set an expiration date as well and this will ensure that the user is getting very limited privilege and also it's a temporary credentials that we are creating for the user. So remember, once your, the user is done working to disable or to delete the user when their work is complete. The next question we have is, you wanna restrict access to certain EC2 instances based on specific tags. For example, let's say you have uh, EC2 instances with the tag environment equals to production. Now you want to restrict access to these EC2 instances. So how can you achieve this? Now again, we will be using IAM policies for this. So we'll be creating IAM policies with the conditions, all right? So we'll be defining the conditions as to uh, uh, what the IAM policy allows. So in this case, 
we will be defining the permissions telling that only the respective ec2 instance tags will be allowed and then we'll be attaching this im policy to the user or the role so you have to make sure that you include a condition that checks the tag value before granting the permission so in this case ideally what we do is we will be creating custom im policies and then uh, uh, let me check so we'll go to policies and we'll create a new policy so here you'll be defining the uh, permissions so you can choose the service so in this case the ec2 service and then what actions you want to allow so let's say we'll give all ec2 actions and then all the resources and here the condition so this is where uh, you can define your uh, condition so you know like let's say the tag so ec2 instance metadata tag so you can define what um, uh, which instance you want to allow and then you can attach this policy to your users or your uh, role and then the policy will start restricting the permissions accordingly the next question you have is your organization has multiple departments each with its own aws resources how can you implement im policies to isolate access between departments so again here we are talking about multiple uh, aws accounts and whenever we talk about multiple aws accounts aws organizations is a service that we use now in this case if you want to isolate the access across these aws accounts one option we have is we can make use of your scps which is your service control policies and this will restrict the access between aws accounts and you know uh, that way you can protect your aws accounts so once you're done creating these scps you can attach these scps to the ous which is your organizational units containing the departmental account so in this case again we will go to the aws organizations service and uh, we make use of your policies all right so we'll be creating your service control policies we make use of this and uh, we'll be applying these policies to the organizational units and that will control the access to your aws accounts the next question we have is you want to enable developers to launch ec2 instances for development purposes but then prevent them from creating overly large instances so how can you enforce instance size restriction so basically you want to give access your to your developers to launch ec2 instances however you want to restrict the uh, parameters like they can launch instances only with the t2 dot medium instance uh, type they cannot use anything else so how can you restrict that now again for this we will be creating an im policy and that will have conditions based on your instance type such as in this case ec2 colon the instance type and we'll be setting the size limitation and that will make sure that the developer can only launch instances with the respective instance type and then we'll be attaching this to the im's uh, user account or to the role account and that will uh, prevent the developers from launching instances other than the instance type that we have allowed them to use the next question we have is you have an application that needs to access an rds database securely how can you ensure the application's credentials are kept secret and rotated regularly so here we are talking about a database and uh, there are credentials associated with this so how can you secure it how can you manage this so for this we can make use of your aws secrets manager service so we can use this service to store the credentials manage the credentials we can also use this to rotate the credentials like every 30 days or quarterly based on whatever you have defined so we can enable the automatic rotation and grant the applications im role the necessary permissions to access this secret so uh, ideally what we will be doing is we will be using this um, secrets manager service where we will uh, store our credentials it could be the database credentials in this case so store a new secret so let's say it will be the rds so you can give the username the password you can encrypt it you also have the option of rotating the keys so you can you can define to automatically rotate the keys that we don't have to manually do it so this way we can you uh, utilize this service to store your sensitive information
that's about uh, 10 common uh, scenario based questions that we have for the uh, IM service. That's all I have for this session. Thank you. Once again, before you leave, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you like the video, leave a like and please share the video.